So growing up in East Texas, I wanted to be a fine artist. And so when I set out into the world, I lost my confidence and um, started looking for what I could do. And so uh, on a road trip in South and going through Austin, I felt the spirit of this city and I saw all of these great neon signs and right at Lamar and 12th, I saw this Terminix bug and I turned to my buddy and I said, I'm moving to this town and I'm gonna make neon signs. <laughs> so I did, I, I came here in 1992 and got a job at Ion Art and uh, worked there for a couple of years and we did a lot of modern contemporary pieces, but then someone wanted this Jack's beer sign as a decor in their Cajun restaurant, and I thought, this is what I want to do, the Art Deco style with the rust and, and the weathering. So I, I went out on my own and started Roadhouse Relics. Uh, I started building commercial signs strictly in the 1940s and 50s style. I restored a lot of neon signs around Austin and the state of Texas. Uh, even the uh, TP Motel in Wharton. But I needed a place to work, so I found this old crumbling grocery store called Baker's Fruit Stand, and I bought it. It didn't even have a roof when I got it, but I started work and I moved into the backyard and started working on it, and eight years later, I had a place that I could be proud of and one day this pretty girl moved here from Canada on her second day she came in bought a work of art and I fell deeply in love with her and um, <clears throat> we started dating and spending time together and I proposed with a neon sign that said Sarah will you marry me she said she would and but I started telling her like my dream of being a kid I really wanted to be a fine artist, just make art for art's sake only. And she said, you know, go for it. If that's your dream, go for it. That's, if, so I closed the commercial sign part of Roadhouse Relics and opened Roadhouse Relics Art Gallery and dedicated to making these pieces as fine art. And it was tough for a couple of years. that We were hardly do, making any money, but finally the New York Times listed it as, as a must-see in Austin. I started making pieces for celebrities. I don't know if you can guess who this one was for. It was originally for Texas Monthly uh, Editorial, but Willie bought it. Um, but uh, I've, I've been shipping these all over the world. I actually ship a lot of them overseas now. This is a piece that really means a lot to me. Um, this is the Kings of Leon album cover I worked on with Dan Winters and the late Brett Kilroe. And it also shows a sketch and then the finished piece. There's, there's a big gap in between these two pieces of what happens. I start with an idea, I sketch it on gridded vellum, and uh, then I take that and make a transparency from it. I blow it up on the wall, do a uh, <clears throat> overhead projector, and start making the neon pattern, metal pattern, and the paint pattern. And I've got this electric wand that I drag over the images and it burns little holes in the paper. So when I put the paper onto the finished metal, I pat it with chalk and the, the image works through and shows onto the piece. I then uh, start hand lettering the piece and painting all of the, the details. I, I don't use any computer graphics. I do all of my own type styles. And then the really fun part for me is weathering a piece. And I actually make it look shiny brand new and then I start wearing it back down just the way Mother Nature would and then uh, let it rust outside. At a certain point, the neon is back from the neon bender. I put the neon on the piece, put the transformer in it and plug it in and it lights up. But the, what 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 makes this miracle happen? What makes me plug this in and the, and the neon ignites in this tube? This man right here is George Claude, and in 1910 in Paris, he invented the neon sign. He figured out how they captured neon out of the atmosphere. You're, you're 
breathing neon right now. They pulled it out of the atmosphere, he isolated it, put it in a neon tube, and invented the neon sign. He also patented it. So uh, a man named G Earl Anthony bought this Packard sign from him in Paris and had it sent to Los Angeles. From there, you can imagine, you, you, you know what happened with neon in America. It, it took off like crazy. It went everywhere. But I want you to take a minute and just imagine if that guy didn't invent the neon sign, would we even have a Las Vegas? Would we, Route 66 would be very different right now. Um, the movie theaters and the drive-in burger joints, the, the, the honky-tonks with the neon sign blinking outside, what if none of that existed because of this one guy that didn't invent the neon sign? Um, and it's not just the places, it's movies, American Graffiti, uh, what would Casablanca be without Rick's Cafe American neon sign shining, and um, just the in a film noir with the hotel sign blinking on and off outside the window. What would country music be without the neon sign? There'd be no neon moon. One of my favorite signs or uh, songs is Wayne Hancock's "Thunderstorms and Neon Signs." That would have never existed. And then as you're driving home tonight, try to imagine what Austin would look like with no neon. It's such a big part of the identity of this city. I liken all of these elements to like little pieces of fabric. And the neon is the thread that kind of sews this quilt into uh, the American experience. Thank you.